Good evening, folks. I'm John Smith. I'm Jason Sweetie. And uh, we're here to talk to you again about sports. Um, sorry about the delay last week. We had something come up there. So we're uh, back on course again for this week. We will go again uh, not the following week. So next week will be Easter Monday. So happy early Easter to everybody. Yeah. Uh, and then we'll get back on course the following Monday after that. Have you seen that Easter Bunny tro on Facebook? The, have you been on Facebook and seen the Easter Bunny going around Charlotte County lately? Yeah, I did. That's pretty cool. <laughs> oh, I thought it was creepier than hell. Well, I mean, I it's a good it. idea. I mean, I'm sure the kids love it, but I tell you, being the way I was when I was five or six years old, if I saw that coming up to the front door, I, yeah, I'd, I'd probably, probably turn the other, right, the other way. But well, if you brought me chocolate, I might be pretty well, happy. Well, yeah, that's, that's true, that's true. Um, so we'll uh, start on maybe kind of uh, regular season should be just about ending up or ended up by the time our next show gets around. So we'll kind of maybe do a quick recap or who we think will be award winners and maybe just kind of a playoff preview on who we think is going to give you trouble in the playoffs and all that stuff. Mm -hmm. uh, we'll start in hockey. Um, so for the Vesna, so for those who don't follow hockey too much, the Vesna is the best goalie in the league. Uh, at this point, I'd say it has to be Carey Price um, Pecker, uh, for Montreal Canadiens. Uh, Pecorine of Nashville Predators has played pretty well. Um, do you see maybe Pecorine getting it, taking Carey, taking it from Carey Price, or has Carey Price played too well and it's pretty well his? Well, yeah, Montreal's leading their conference. They're going to win the division. Um, you know, I mean... Uh, He's been phenomenal all year, Pekka Rene. He had a lot of momentum, and Nashville was playing really well up until he got hurt. Um, they kind of went into a little bit of a swoon. Carey Price said, you know, he's leading the league in shutouts, wins, goals against, save percentage. Yeah. I mean, he's the real deal. Um, he's had a phenomenal year. Montreal, I mean, for me, is probably the favorite to come out of the Eastern Conference playoff-wise. Yeah. Um, yeah, I mean, I think it's his I think, I think uh, it's his award for uh, he's sure. He's played phenomenal. Uh, I'd say like it would be a two-horse race, Devin or uh, Pecker Rene and Carey Price. So oh yeah, yeah. And, Ren, and nothing to take away from Rene. I mean, Nashville's had a strong season, but I, I mean, his, I think his momentum kind of shit, you know, yeah. uh, shifted when he got hurt, took yeah. that time off, and when he came back, you know, they weren't, he wasn't as sharp. Nashville wasn't as sharp. Um, and Carey Price hasn't slowed down. Yeah, at I mean, all, they, so. I mean, Montreal's been a very consistent team all year. He's been consistent himself, as I said. Yeah. Um, Oh, so kind of sticking with Carey Price, he's uh, played well enough, in my opinion, for the Hart Trophy. And uh, for those of you who don't want the Hart Trophy, that's the MVP. Mm -hmm. um, typically, it doesn't go to goalies in the NHL. They kind of go for goal scores. I believe the last goalie to win it was Jose Theodore, coincidentally a Montreal mm -hmm. Canadiens. Yeah. Um, does Carey Price merit the Hart Trophy? Like, would Montreal be anywhere close to where they are without Carey Price this year. Well, it's kind of the same argument that you, that you see in Major League Baseball. You know, does a pitcher deserve the MVP when they have the Cy Young kind of devoted, you know, I mean, that's their award, right? So it can, it's kind of seen as the pitcher of the year in, in, in you know, in the, and also kind of like the MVP yeah. pitcher, you know what I mean? So that's that argument in baseball. I could see how people would make the same argument in hockey. You know, um, the Vesna Trophy is the goalie's MVP per se, right? Yeah. So, you know, the MVP should go to a skater. Yeah. Um, yeah. I mean, I, I mean, he. To me, I think yeah, though, I mean, uh, the the MVP is the or the Vesna is the MVP for the goalies. But I think if the goalies played better than even all the skaters, then mm -hmm. I think that's when he deserves the Hart Trophy. Yeah. And right now. I don't think there's been a player in the NHL who's had a better season than Carey Price. So well, I, I, mean, I, I don't know, think there's anybody that could really take it from him. And yeah. Well, I mean, looking, okay, and comparing, like, and we'll talk about the NBA later on, um, you know, typically in the NBA, the MVP goes to the, te the player on the best team, team yeah. right? Um, as far as this year is in hockey, I mean, yes, you have Carey Price, Montreal, I mean, Nashville, Anaheim. I mean, they've they've had strong seasons, but I mean, Anaheim has Geslav and Perry. So um, and then you look at Tampa Bay. Have played well, well, that's right. And uh, Anaheim as and well. And you have Tampa Bay. I mean, they have Tyler Johnson, Stamkos. Um, you know, Ben Bishop. I mean, they're they're a collectively good team. Yep. The Rangers again. They. I mean, they have a lot Lundqvist of star power. Nash, Lund yeah. Lundqvist was out for a while. So um, I'd like to see. You know, some little bit of momentum for like a John Tavares. I mean, yeah. the Islanders are going to make playoffs. You know, they haven't really had a lot of success over the years. I mean, he was drafted in to be that cornerstone, that that turning point for the franchise. 
it seems like they're getting it, yeah, you know. I, I really think a couple of the signings they made in the uh, free agents helped them, like uh, Nick Letty from Chicago mm -hmm. and then Dennis Seidenberg from, um, or not Dennis Seidenberg. Johnny Wojcik. Johnny Wojcik yeah, from yeah. Boston, yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah, and I mean, they've had, you know, young younger players, you know, come up and, and you know, fulfill the roles yeah. that they've they've needed to but i just see someone like john Tavares. i mean he's a you know i mean he puts the puck in the net and i mean he he's oh, he's, he's carrying them oh yeah and i mean he's he's a guy that uh you know my, you know you like to root for i mean he's well he's it'd be nice player, to see so. the islanders do something i mean they haven't really done too much since uh the days of 84 85 86 yeah. like billy smith and stuff so. yeah and i mean they're and they're, and they're a playoff team you know i mean you you look at the other big point getters, you know, you, you know, I mean, um, Ovechkin, Crosby, Malkin, I mean, they're kind of like, they're you know, they're, they're old hat, you know yeah. I mean? They've all won their awards. Everyone's, you know, um, but I mean, they're, they're, they're just putting up numbers that they're used to putting up, you know what I mean? Yeah. And I mean, well, you go, the, and the numbers this year for points in the NHL really is quite uh, low. It could be the lowest scoring, mm -hmm. like they're the leading scorer could be the lowest in 20 years, I guess, for the points per yeah. game. So. Well, I mean, it's definitely not the, the way it was back in the day, you know what I mean? And, and um, you know, yeah, 100 points you yeah. usually, well, nowadays, will definitely guarantee that you're going to lead, lead well. the league, you know, back. Gretzky, you know, 212. Yeah, right? Lemieux. No and I mean, that, well, I mean, but. even Paul Coffey as a defenseman was getting, you know, 130, yeah. you know, 20, 130 points. But, you know, even, and I mean, a team like Chicago, I mean, Patrick Kane probably had a good, you know, a good chance, but yeah, I mean, he got hurt, hurt and stuff like that. So, I mean, yeah, I mean, if Carey Price wins both, I, you know, I mean, I, 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 oh, yeah, and I mean, I would say much deserved. Yeah, yeah. sure. Um, for the coach of the year, the mm -hmm. Jack Adams, uh, do you see anyone besides Bob Hartley for Calgary Flames maybe taking it from him? Well, I, I you know, I mean, Paul Maurice for Winnipeg. Yeah, I mean, he's really, a, I mean, it's, I mean, Winnipeg, well. uh, you know, um, I didn't really think they would have. Nearly know, as well. No. <laughs> yeah, you know, um, do as well as they have this year. I think he's, you know, I mean, I think he's done very well. And I mean, yeah. well, I mean that, that's kind of Vancouver's an, also uh, played right. very well, yep, too, like yep. uh, coming out in after torts and yep. kind of. Writing that ship, I guess. It yeah, and I mean, and any time, you know, any time you win your conference or, you know, um, you're always in the running. So, I mean, he, you know, the coaches from, you know, I, I mean, it's, it's yeah. more or less a wide open, yeah. a wide open, uh, you know, discussion. Right, so with coaches this uh, this offseason, I think this, this this could be probably a bigger free agent period for the coaches this mm -hmm. offseason than really any big name free agents for players in the NHL. Um, Right now, if Babcock doesn't sign with Detroit, he's up for uh, free agents. Um, if San Jose doesn't make the playoffs, which it really isn't looking good for them right at this point. No, they're, they're pretty much done. Six, six or eight points out right now, and um, chasing teams like L.A., Minnesota, mm -hmm. Calgary, and Winnipeg, I think, are the bottom four They right now, would probably so. need to win out and have, you know, the two wildcard teams kind Lose of, Lose out you know, pretty well, yeah. the bed, so So I, I, it happen. kind of looks like Todd McLennan may be up for grabs. Uh, if Boston happens to falter, it's possible that Claude Julian goes out. So, I mean, there's going to be some big-name coaches. Dan Bilesman is still available from last year. Yeah. Um, so for a team like maybe say the the Leafs, which uh, um, unfortunately I am a fan of, mm -hmm. uh, this could be very good for them because there yeah. there could be some very good coaches out there. Well, I think there's um, already been a grabs. you know a little bit of a groundswell rumor for you know Babcock, you know yeah. for Babcock to go there. Um, as far as Julian getting fired from the Bruins, I mean I don't think that is as much as they're tuning him out or or uh, you know that he's not a good coach. I mean. I, mean, I think big, it would just be maybe more of a change if I, I, I well I think you know I think it's the personnel more so than the coach yeah. I mean they you get know, tight I mean, to the salary cap and kind of they made a big blunder when they traded Sagan um, you know I mean uh, Krejci has been hurt all year you yeah. can't depend on him um, Chara was hurt I in the mean, beginning and he seems like he's kind of lost a step well, I mean, yeah, I mean, and, and uh, you know, I mean, those are, the, and I mean, you trade Boychuk, I mean, and, you know, they lost Seidenberg, I mean, you know, I mean, what, I mean, I'd say pretty well is what done Boston in his thing. Yeah, you know, but I mean, they're, and... they're, they're in the eighth slot right now. Yes, playing against Montreal if, if all things ended today, but, Wouldn't you know, I mean. a beautiful playoff series? Well, yeah, I mean, it's just, you know, I mean, it's who doesn't want to see that, you know what I mean, yeah. win or lose, you know. Um, so, yeah, I mean, I don't think it's, is as much Julian as, you know, the personnel. Now in San Jose, I think, you know, things have 
you know, hit a tipping point. Um, a few weeks back, you know, Doug Wilson, the general manager, you yeah. know, kind of called out Thornton and stuff like that. And, and I mean... And Thornton responded back and told him Yeah, but I mean, mouth. the thing is, Thornton... He's a points guy, but he doesn't come through when it matters the most, and that's been his yeah. career. And yeah. until you do it, I, it's a fair argument. So, I mean, them not making the playoffs, I mean, that's going to be an easy scapegoat yeah. to blame McClellan. And, you know, but I mean, I'm sure they'll move on. To me, I for San Jose, I would more blame the core than I would McClellan. It's, they've had the same core for 10 years, oh, yeah. and they haven't really done too much. So, yeah. I would... I but, think yeah. yeah, I mean I agree. And I mean Niami hasn't had that good of a year, the goaltender. Um, you know, Marlowe's long in the tooth. I mean yeah. Couture and uh, you know, uh, Pavelski, I mean they're That's consistent team, scorers yeah. and I mean they're good players, but they really haven't taken that I, that but jump. Do, do you think maybe that's um because Thornton and Marlowe maybe are kind of holding them back from well, taking the so. captain yeah. like yeah. the yeah, leadership perhaps role? So. Yeah, perhaps so. And um, I mean I remember, you know, uh I think it was, it was either Tortorella, last year or... too, that said about Joe Thornton, he could go down in history as one of the greatest NHL players to not win a thing hmm. because he's, like you said, he's he plays well and he plays well and he plays well, and then when you need him, he's not there. Yeah, so. well, no, he gets points, and, I mean, he he comes through in the regular season, you know, and, uh, you know, accumulates points. I mean, he stays healthy relatively, right? So, I mean, you know, he's a, he, I mean, he's a good player, but I mean, when you have the general manager calling him out, he did lose the captaincy last, you know, after last year's playoff debacle, you know, I mean, that's, I, that's, that's the recipe for things to change, yeah. unfortunately. And, and, and in unfortunately sports, for San so. Jose, they've kind of put themselves in a bind by giving these players no trade clauses and then yeah, kind of wanting them out. And now he's, Thornton ultimately has the same where he gets to play. Like, mm -hmm. if, if he wants to stay in San Jose and make their life miserable, then he can really do it because yeah. he can be like, no, nah, I don't want to go there. Or, yeah. So, but yeah, I think they've, something's got to change there mm -hmm. for sure. It's been oh, yeah. 10 years yeah. of. Oh, yeah, and I'm sure they will. You know, I mean, um, Barry Trotz had a lot of success with Nashville. I mean, I think he took him to the playoffs numerous times in his 14 year yeah. tenure there as head coach. You know, they made a move and look at them. They're, you know, tops in their one. conference, and he goes to Washington, and they're legit threat in the Eastern yeah. Conference. So, I mean, he's legitimately made Alex Ovechkin look like a not player. a lazy player. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah. yeah. He's, so, he's done well with Ovechkin, and uh, yeah. Ovechkin's kind of rejuvenated his game. Well, um, exactly, because Washington's had a, high, a very high turnover uh, <laughs> rate in coaches, you know, I mean, yeah, well, in the last few years. I mean, there's Hunter been, Oates, uh, Boudreau. Boudreau. Like and and Trotz now, five, and I think that's yeah. in the last at least four or five years. So, so I mean, yeah. So, I mean, it, he might get another year then. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, <clears throat> So I, the NHL is really it's it's gonna it should be a good playoff season. Oh, um, absolutely. The, it's a possibility to also say maybe New York Islanders face New York Rangers in the first round. That would be an awesome season. Mm -hmm. I'm kind of with the Rangers too with coaches. Uh, some of the somebody that I haven't mentioned that should get a lot of credit is Elaine Vigneault. Mm -hmm. um, he came in after Tortorella kind of sunk that New York Rangers ship too, and yeah. uh, Tor and Vigneault's made them a legit team. Like um, so. They're, they're doing good. So. Yeah. Oh, yeah. And, and I mean... Uh, to it, me, it, it, it kind of looks like it's going to be a Montreal-New York East final again. Uh, and, well, yeah. I mean, well, you never know. I mean, that's... Yeah. I mean, you're just one injury away, and then that, that could shift everything. But, yeah, as far as Tortorella, I mean, I think he's a good coach, but, um, I, I, I mean, I just think he wears you out. You know yeah. I mean? I, I, I would... It, it seems to be that way. Like, he just always in the media, always saying, you know, challenging players and stuff like that. And sooner than later, you know, um, it just... It's just too much, yeah. you know, wears you out. And, I mean, Vino had, I mean, they made it to a Game 7 and, and, and uh, you yeah. know, stay well, in the and, Cup Finals. And then and I, I mean, think that's kind of like you said, too. Like, it just sometimes maybe it's just a change that's needed. Like, Barry Trotz going from Nashville. Mm -hmm. It didn't really hurt Nashville that much. And it's not that Barry Trotz was a bad coach because no. he's proven himself in Washington. Oh, absolutely. So. Oh, yeah, yeah. I and mean, it's kind of Vino going from Vancouver to New York. Like, he's just sometimes you just need a change. Yeah, well, change is inevitable. I mean, it's... I mean, it's, so, it's going to happen. But who, so. who's to say maybe, like, if uh, – I, I do agree with you that Boston, if they were to miss the playoffs and let go of Claude Julian, it would just be their scapegoat or whatever. Mm -hmm. But they still would have pretty well that same core, so maybe that could kind of yeah. bring them back to the Stanley Cup contenders that they yeah. were the year before. So. Well, yeah, and, I mean, the thing is about, you know, hockey. I mean, the salary cap do, does factor in. It's not, it's not baseball, you know what I mean? So, I mean – that's why they had to trade Boychuk. I mean, yeah. it was a, it was a salary cap move, and and that's what they had to do. And you know, and I mean, 
So with, Tuca didn't have a good year this year either. I mean, he no. hasn't been Well, and he's what he been was. off and on injured a little bit yeah, too. Yeah, so I mean, it's, you know, but I mean, sustained success is, you know, I mean, is so is only for so long. I mean, you only have so many franchises like the Red Wings, right? Yeah. I mean, you go peaks and valleys, and Boston's been pretty consistent over the last, you know, seven, six, you know, yeah. six, seven, eight years. So as a fan, I mean, if they may, don't make it this year, well, that's, you know, I, I didn't think they really would anyway. So, I mean, yeah. it's... You know, it's not the um, end of the world by with, any means. With um, kind of NHL on tanking has been a big issue. Um, mm-hmm. They, I guess, kind of come more. Well, it's been a big issue all season, but kind of come more to the forefront uh, during a Buffalo Sabers Arizona Coyotes game, mm-hmm. where it's a battle of the 30th and 29th place teams, and Buffalo actually come behind and won that game in overtime, and their hometown fans were booing them because they won. Um, because it's ruining their chances of getting the best draft pick. Mm-hmm. Um, do you think the NHL and maybe even the other leagues like the NBA should look into maybe fixing the lottery system? So well, that there's. Oh, well, n- I think the NBA's fixed lo- the lottery before yeah. uh, <laughs> quite uh, a few times. I think maybe, in my opinion, they should put it. Uh, if you miss playoffs, you miss playoffs. Fourteen balls, fourteen. Like that's mm-hmm. the point of a lottery. It's, it's supposed to be unpredictable. Like. Yeah. Four percent. I think it'd end up being seven point whatever percent chance for each team. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Well, I mean, you know, until they change it. You but know. can you imagine that too, though? Like that would be awesome for, like, say, a team like, say, OKC just misses this year or something mm-hmm. in the NBA, like just hypothetical, and they'd already fixed the draft. OKC then ends up getting the number one pick in the NBA after they still have a core of like Durant, Westbrook. Like, it, you could set up so many. It'd be easier, I guess, to get. Um, I don't think it'll ever happen because those teams who do um, finish in dead last would probably be a little. Okay, irritated. well here's but. here's the thing. Yeah, I mean the tanking argument gets a lot of steam because that's what the media says. I can't for the life of me think that any of those players, whether NBA, NHL, baseball, football, are out there with I, their competitive yeah. nature, with their pride on the line, with their desire to win and perform at a high level, play for themselves, play for their teammates, play for their team, play for their hometown. I can't for the life of them think. I don't that, necessarily believe it's the players, though. Well, then what it, do you... Well, it would be the coach. Like, the coach... The, the, coach, the coach would never... Yeah, no, but even, like, um, the GM can ship off, uh, like, 76ers. You can ship off players that are helping you now for assets, mm-hmm. um, which would, in a sense, you're hurting your team for now into the future, looking wow. towards the future. So, I mean, that is, in a sense, tanking. Or if, um, as a coach, you could put out a younger player in a close game to try and give him the experience mm-hmm. of the play, but really you you want him to you want him to get the experience, yes, but you also don't want to put in a guy that you know can make that play. Okay, well, um, where to start? Where to start? <laughs> um, okay. Uh, okay, well, just because a younger player comes up from the minor leagues doesn't mean that they've given up. What the 76ers are doing is, yes, your average fan may not agree with what they're doing, but the general manager has, you know, the okay from manage, you know, ownership to implement his plan. His plan is just this, to acquire SS draft picks. But I mean, it essentially that will is it work? tanking. Will it work? Time will tell. But, but, but they're not tanking because those players are out there working their butts off and they're winning games. They're, 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 they're not, not the worst not the team. Play, in, not the players, though. I'm not saying the players tank. I'm saying you're... But they're the ones that are playing the game. Yeah, but I, it's the product that you... The 76ers could have assembled a, a more competitive team for this season than they have. They traded Possibly. away some of their competitiveness for future assets. Mm-hmm. So they're tanking for this season for the future. Okay. Not the players, but the... But you don't know that. Nobody knows that. They don't know what Michael Carter Williams is going to turn out to be. Since he's been traded, the Bucks have gone the complete yeah. opposite way. Now, but maybe I mean, he hit his ceiling last year as Rookie of the Year. He was a good player at Syracuse University. He was he was good last year, but the guy can't shoot. Yeah, he's a good point guard. I mean, he's decent, but maybe that draft pick that they got turns into a future All Star. Yeah. nobody and, knows. Uh, and I'm not saying that it, it's not. Ta- I'm not saying that tanking doesn't necessarily help you in the future. It will help you in the future if it goes 
according to plan. Mm -hmm. But it doesn't necessarily always go to according to plan. But I do think that they should put, implement a system where you're trying to put a competitive team on the field, on the ice, on the court mm -hmm. for that season. Not not even for the season. Like you can even use the Maple Leafs trade where they shipped out David Clarkson for a Nathan Horton. You're getting rid of a player that is NHL ready, can play in the lineup. Whether or not he helped your team is regardless. But I mean, you're trading that away for a body that's not even going to be Mm -hmm. on your roster. So mm -hmm. I mean in a sense that is it's not the players tanking though It's the the general managers shipping away players for future players So you're hurting well, that, your chances now for your chances in the future, but, but essentially what, that is tanking. okay But what were their chances now? They weren't gonna make the playoffs anyway. Well, either one of the teams. No, I mean no So but what I think if you at least maybe made it So that the general managers had to try and put on a competitive team every season and then I think if they made the lottery so that it was not weighted it's just 1 to 14 then mm -hmm. every team would try to put out a competitive team because you know you're just yeah but you, those lesser teams with you know I mean prove it prove that they're not that they're tanking you can't prove it no I mean but you I know mean, I mean those players were embarrassed of how they were treated after that Sabres game I mean, that's the fans that, be, that they pay the money. They have the right to yeah. do what they want. If they think that, you know, them coming in last it guarantees them Connor McDavid, well, then, it wouldn't necessarily. You know, but if they come in dead last, you're almost guaranteed Jack Eichel because you can only drop down. So, I mean, mm -hmm. you're guaranteed the one or the two. But it doesn't, but it doesn't always work that way either. The no. lottery doesn't always work that way. But, um, you know, I know when the Celtics had the worst record and they were – predicted to get the you know number one pick when Tim Duncan came out he didn't no so and in the NBA I think so you can drop four too can't you know you, so you like if you have there the number are one, some you can rules drop down but I mean that's, that's gotten a lot of traction as well that they want to make changes to that they want to make changes to that but you know I mean I, I you know I mean so another you know kind of on the opposite side I mean now you have NBA teams that set all their star players because they you know need the rest and and they've already got their playoff position kind of locked down. I mean the Spurs for years have been guilty of this. Yeah. Um, you know I mean you have some media members that are saying that's just as much of an issue as the tanking. Yeah. So you know I mean yeah I mean th there is always going to be that suspicion that conversation. I mean I remember a couple years ago you know um, the the Warriors the Golden State Warriors you know, would sit there, you know, play their bench and stuff. But, you know, I mean, there is there is an argument to say, yeah, you, you got to give your younger, inexperienced players the, uh, the chance. I mean, yeah. they are professionals as well, and they deserve a chance to see if they can prove themselves. Sometimes you they do, you know what I mean? Enough, and yeah. I mean, uh, and what's the harm in saying, you know, uh, the Red Sox bring up all their rookies in September because, uh, you know, they're at the playoff hunt. There's nothing wrong with that. I mean, as a fan, you just got to trust in the organization that you root for. Yeah. Um, you know, but I mean, I, I mean, I wouldn't, I would, but see, this is the thing. Like, I would never cheer for my hometown team to lose just no. because of a draft pick uh, place or, or anything like that. So that's more on the fans and you I, know a man yeah. owner uh, uh ownership i still think that they should maybe do something to make it less encouraging to try and build for the future maybe try and make it so that teams try and build more for the, the draft yeah. yeah yeah well yeah i mean I, I mean i'm not saying that there isn't alternative ways to do it but you think of the good teams that do build through the draft i mean yeah they're not all first round picks i mean a lot mm -hmm. of first round picks turn out to be busts i yeah. mean look at like the nfl i mean how many number one, number two, number three draft picks have turned out to be yeah. absolute crap? You know what I mean? It Same happens every year too, all the time. Yeah. So, you know, I mean. It's all in your scouting, too. Like, it's oh, how absolutely. good your scouts are. I mean, it's like, Detroit collaborative... can pick out, seems to, they seem to pick out a steal in the third, fourth, yeah. fifth round every year, and they have for the last 20 years. So, yeah, it's definitely all about scouting and. So if you do tank and you have good scouts, and or not tank, if you do lose and you do have good scouts, then it can work out for you and you can build f for the future. But if you have not such good scouts uh, like Edmonton uh, and you kind of continuously lose and continuously lose and get these players, then... 
well, then that's up to ownership to fire those guys and <laughs> get better ones. But yeah, you know, I mean, I, as a fan, would trust, would want to believe yeah. that the They're team I'm rooting win. for is putting the best team out there to be successful. Yeah. And I mean, you I, know, I mean. See, I have a hard time with that as a Leafs fan just because I know they can, uh, no matter what product they put on the ice, they're going to pretty well sell out. Although they did, uh, for the first time in 13 years, not have a sellout there against Minnesota, I believe it was. Mm -hmm. So I think there were short 50 seats or something, but mm. regardless, that's the first time in 13 years. So maybe if they continue losing, then maybe some well. Maple Leafs fans will stop yeah. paying and give it to like. No, oh, it's just like, it was a comment I made earlier. I think it was in our first show. It's like, they can put out whatever they want. They know they're going to sell out. So yeah. <laughs> why not? <laughs> so, I mean, that's hard as a fan, too. Yeah. So, and then I kind of, I think it'd be very hard as a Sixers fan, too, just to, it looked like they were getting on the start of the rebuild before this trade deadline, and then mm -hmm. they, well, they still shipped don't. out assets to build for the future. Yeah, I guess, well, I mean, of, you know what, though? Yeah. Maybe they pick up two or three players. I mean, this is going to be a very good NBA draft. Yeah. So, I mean, they, you know, if they, they have two or three first round rounders, which I'm sure that they do, not off right off the top of my head, but I'm sure that they do. Yeah. You've got a lot of good players to choose from. So, I mean, and the thing is, I mean, they're not that, that terrible. No, I mean, they, they didn't they... trade Nerlens Noel, who's a, going to be a very impactful defensive player as, as time goes on. Joel, Joel, Embiid. Joel Embiid is going to be playing next year. I mean, they... Um, they, they do still have a good core, but yeah, I, mean, I, just, I, I, I didn't agree with the uh, Michael I, Carter Williams and then... Um, but you know what, though? There. I can't think of the name. But. I know every fan and every media member thinks that they have all the answers, and you know, there's, it's, there, yeah. you know, maybe they know something that we don't. Yeah. <laughs> no, that's maybe true. you know, it was something a good trade. I mean, maybe time operating. will tell yeah. that Carter Williams hit his peak. They sold high on him, and that was that. Yeah. I mean, so I mean, with the uh, with the NBA draft, kind of, we you said it was going to be a good one this year. Yeah. Um, Watching the NCAA tournament, you can kind of gather that, that mm -hmm. uh, the college basketball March Madness has been phenomenal. Um, who do you have going through, I guess, for the winners? Uh, do you have Kentucky going the perfect 40-0? Uh, well, I mean, they were definitely dealt a pretty big scare there the other night against Notre Dame. Um, what a phenomenal game, though. It was a great game. And, I mean, Notre Dame, geez, they had them on the ropes. But, you know what? I think I do believe Kentucky was nine for nine um, field goals. The last uh, eight minutes. Yeah, or last something. eight minutes. Yeah. So they they executed, but that's 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 you know that's when you have great coaching, good players who are smart, playing for each other and playing for their teammates, and you know clearly have practiced throughout the year and paid attention and know what to do when it comes crunch time. Um, I mean they weren't challenged very much throughout their year. I mean, conference games on the road throughout the season is always, you know, one of those, you know, trap games, if yeah. you will, right? So on the biggest stage, they, they performed and, you know, Notre Dame kind of got, you know, escaped a couple, uh, a couple uh, tight games, tight games yeah. in, in the first, uh, first round in the round of 32. So, you know, I mean, Notre Dame pushed them. I mean, they had a very good, they have a very good team. Um, you know, they, uh, one of uh, Jerry and Grant, who's related to uh, Horace Grant, Harvey Grant's son, I guess. I yeah. mean, he was named uh, All-American all there today. So, I mean, they had a good quality team. So, to answer your question, I mean, I don't see how anybody's going to be able to match up with Kentucky. Um, I mean, they, they run, you know, two guys over seven feet. You know, they got the Harrison twins. Yeah. Um, they run 10, 11 guys. No one on their team averages over 26 minutes. Yeah, I mean, they, they have a senior there um, who doesn't even get to play. And, I mean, he used to play um, Kyle Wilcher, who, who is a Canadian, transferred out of Kentucky and went to Gonzaga because he knew he wasn't going to be playing, yeah. right? And, I mean, he's he's a very good player. And that so, was a tough loss for Gonzaga yesterday, too. Well, they, yeah, they well, I mean... They were up hard. They yeah, well, I mean, Gonzaga, Gonzaga typically doesn't make it that far. Yeah. So they had a good season. I mean, there's no there's no shame in losing no, to Duke. No, So, not. I mean. Coach it, K is one of the best coaches of all time. Oh, absolutely. Well, so. Yeah, well, I mean, Duke's, you know, one of the top programs by far. So, yeah, I mean, they play Kentucky and Wisconsin. I mean, I see Kentucky. I mean, I, I, I like Wisconsin. I, I mean, Kaminsky, who, you know, is up for the John Wooden Award Player of the Year. Um, he was named an All-American. I mean, he's, 
they got a very good team too. So I mean, it's going to be, be a great game. Be a and weekend. I mean, Michigan State Duke. I mean, you got Tom Izzo, Coach K going head to head. I mean, Michigan State was a seven seven seed, yeah. which is was clearly completely underseeded. Yeah. <laughs> um, you know, so um, two very successful programs strong fan bases throughout you know north america um so i mean it's they're they're going to be very good it's going to be a very good final four so and whichever teams come out of it the uh, I championship think the, game's going to yeah. be a great one too so. yeah and i think uh out of the final four teams too any of the if any of them were to win it i would think they would all deserve it because all oh, four yeah. of the teams have had a phenomenal season it's not like kind of somebody just kind of went on a cinderella mm-hmm. run sort of thing but mm-hmm. all four of these teams really have played they could be well, I, well, there's the three number three number one seed. So I mean, they're consensus um, one of the best teams in the North America right now for college. Yeah. And then the seven, and we both agree that they were very underseeded. So mm. I, I like Michigan State. I mm. mean, I like Kentucky to win, but I mean, I'd like to see Michigan State just because Spartans. Let's go Spartans. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, yeah. I mean, uh, but I mean, I don't think that they have the horses to match up with the Jaleel Okafor and and, no. and and I mean their bigs down there. I mean Duke is uh, they're going to be tough. But yeah, no. I mean, yeah. To your point, yeah. I mean, there was no George Masons, Wichita States out there they, who who yeah, like you said, made a cinder, Cinderella run. Um, these are four well-deserving, um, you know, programs, teams. programs, and um, yeah, no, I think it's going to be great. Yeah. I mean, it's definitely lived up to the hype. <laughs> All right, so we're going to take a quick break, folks. Uh, when we come back, we're going to touch a little more on some NBA and then uh, some baseball and some football free agent roundup, any of the ones that we would have missed um, after the last show, so... Hi, I'm Mark Taylor. Join me each week when I'll be talking to guests from southwestern New Brunswick on topics that I think you'll find both entertaining and interesting every Tuesday and Thursday evening at 8.30 and again Saturday and Sunday mornings at 11.30 right here on CHCO Television. This is New Brunswick's independent community channel, CHCO TV. We live in Charlotte County. And welcome back, folks. Uh, I, again, I'm John Smith. And I'm Jason Speedy. Um, so we're just, uh, Jason has uh, just a quick uh, condolences he wants yeah, to uh, pass on. Rod Wilson Sr. Um, passed away there over the weekend there in, in Fredericton. And um, for anybody here locally in Charlotte County that, you know, at least my age and up, um, you know, he had a very direct impact on all of our lives and not only on the baseball field but uh, as a person you know um, I had the privilege of being coached by him in my uh, first year in high school um, and um, you know the lessons and and um, you know baseball knowledge I guess that I acquired from him um, you know has helped me um, reach my own goals and um, you know taught me not only lessons on the ball field but um, you know in life, life as well yeah. right and um you know rod wilson field here in, in st stephen is you know dedicated to him and um you know he uh you know i remember you know driving my bike through there and he'd be out there he'd be out there you know grooming the field and you know doing mm-hmm. doing the things to the field because the town didn't um and he wanted to make that look spectacular and um you know for me personally, um, I'm getting married in a couple weeks or a couple months. Um, our ceremony is going to be on the Rod Wilson Field, and um, you know, it's not. It, you know, it has so many. I have so many fond memories of, of that. Uh, you know, playing on that field yeah. growing up, and um, you know, I, I've always I had a lot of respect for him. Um, for the family and um so i know that uh, for a lot of people in charlotte county area who had the privilege of knowing him and being coached by him definitely you know send their condolences nice, yeah. to, to the family so yeah. so um yeah sorry um again yep yeah yep. uh so we'll kind of go on to nba um steve nash has officially announced his retirement from the nba mm-hmm. um he is one of the if not the greatest uh, canadian basketball player ever um, GC Hall of Fame in his oh, horizon. Yeah. Oh yeah, absolutely. Two-time MVP. I mean, he he was him with that 
Phoenix offense that they ran in the early 2000s. I mean, seven kind seconds of, or less. Yeah, cha- kind of changed the NBA and is kind of you know reflective of what we see today in a, in a lot of ways. Um, yeah, he's he's no doubt. Uh, first ballot Hall of Famer all the way. So, uh, just I kind of seen a poll um, the other day. Uh, who who had a bigger impact on Canadian sports, uh, Wayne Gretzky or Steve Nash? Oh, you can't even compare it. I mean, you can't, you can't, I mean, it's not even, it's not even a poll that has any type of, you know, it's there's, apples not, there's, and nothing, oranges, yeah, guess, there's nothing to it. I mean, I guess they were just trying to, kind of trying to put a, into perspective the legacy that Steve Nash kind of had in basketball. Like, he's pretty well the Wayne Gretzky of basketball for Canada, I guess. Yeah, well, yeah, well, but there was, there's a lot more Canadians playing hockey than there is playing basketball. Yeah. So to be able to say that, yes, yeah, Steve Nash, who was Canadian, won a league MVP, had, you know, first team All-Stars, all NBA, is going to be a Hall of Famer, all this stuff. I mean, there's lots of Canadians that play in the NHL that are, have done all yeah. that. You know what I mean? Like yeah. it's not that unique. You know, Gretzky was yeah. Gretzky was a great, great sports icon for this country. But it's just it's different because and, Steve Nash is like one of very few. Yeah, I mean, he's like a pioneer. And then even like the playoff game where uh, he broke his nose and he just pops it back into place. Yeah. That really kind of. Uh, shows the Canadian like spirit I mm-hmm. mean you, you see that in hockey a lot but you don't really see it in basketball as much I, like I've seen LeBron James get carried off the court for leg cramps or yeah well I mean and, and I mean Steve Nash I mean he's an accomplished um, you know I mean he, he did an ESPN 30 for 30 there uh, about Terry Fox um, you know big soccer fan he you know does basketball camps he's you know, owner of the Vancouver Whitecaps as yeah. well for the so soccer, I mean so. he's uh, you know I mean he's a seems to be a, a well-rounded Individual, individual yeah. and uh, you know, I, I, I mean, think it's really too bad that he never um, got a chance to win a championship. He could end up being one of the best players um, in NBA history to not win a championship. So, oh well, yeah, well, yeah, but that that list is pretty big, crowded. Yeah. Yeah. You know, I mean, you got Malone, Stockton, Charles Barkley. I mean, but I mean, uh, it, imagine what, that All Star team. <laughs> yeah, well, exactly, well, exactly. But I mean, that shouldn't define his career by any means. You know what I mean? That he, he, he didn't was win a championship, a which, which they, you era. know, which they will. I mean, that will be the the second sentence yeah. in his bio or whatever, right? Oh, he never won a championship, yeah. and so that therefore he must be put down a peg, you know, and that's just not right. I mean, no, he, I mean, he, he was going against Kobe Bryant in the West there for a while, and well, the Lakers had good teams, the Spurs had good teams. I mean. That Western Conference playoff was tough, and I mean, and and you know, I mean, they kudos to they, the teams that did get it, and they no. did have, they, you know, they had their chance against the Lakers in um, 9 10 I do believe, and um, there was know. a couple of flat foul calls that could have gone the other way, I think. Too. Well, that, and I mean, Amar Sarmayer got suspended for a yeah. game, you know, for for a game seven, I do believe that that was yeah. against the Spurs, and I mean, that changes everything because Sarmayer was, you know. An all-star, right. playing an all-star level at the time, so you no, know, I mean, but you know, I mean, Steve Nash really retired yeah. at the beginning of the year. You know what I mean? Like, and, he, and you then know, they called him back. And, well, I mean, he was done. I mean, yeah. he was done. I mean, he, you know, he he tried, but the body, you know, I mean, I guess for me, the the biggest regret is that he couldn't go out on his own terms. You know, um, would have been nice to be able to see him even retire. Well, it, you know, it, like on his own terms. Like well, yeah, said, yeah. Like, I mean, it's it's just too bad when the body betrays you, but Father Time never yeah. loses, and I mean, he just couldn't do it. And yeah. I mean, he, he, in a way, he did revolutionize nutrition and training and and proper preparation, and in in that way, as a as a player, right? And I, you know, I mean, people learn from him in that regard too, yeah. right? So I mean, it's no, he's so, he's well, a, and then you know, kind of talking sure. about with injuries and body betraying you. Um, Kevin Durant now uh, out again for another four to six months. Yeah. Uh, same knee or ankle, I guess. Uh, foot. Foot. Yeah. It's yeah. The screw. So. What's well, he, that? What's? Uh, well, he came back too quick. Um, you know, he uh, that type of Jones fracture in your foot is something you you just can't you can't rush. rush you know. Um, uh, Durant, Durant obviously had a better career than someone like a Sam Bowie, who we all know who was picked before Michael Jordan in the draft and, and, and stuff like that, but he had similar issues. Bill Walton, who's highly regarded as probably the best basketball player that ever lived, 
but never was able to show it because of his... Played 11 seasons, I think, in, or 10 seasons, was it? Well, I don't know. Was, but I think I mean, it wasn't he, very many, and he was all-star and won, I think, eight or nine championships out of the 10 seasons that he played. Uh, yeah, I mean, so. uh, well, 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 yeah, Bill Walton would have, yeah, I mean, but he just could never stay healthy yeah. because of his, because of his, you know, because of the feet. I would hate to see that this turns into Durant's. Well, and even you know, Derrick Rose, like uh, Derrick Rose hasn't played uh, too much in the last four years either. He's mm -hmm. uh, looking like he might be due to come back again. He's had his first full contact practice since yeah. uh, he went out again. Yeah. Um, I'm kind of hoping maybe that uh, these players come back. That I mean, it's the NBA has taken a hurting these last little bit with. Um, all stars getting injured. Uh, Dwight Howard's been out. Kobe Bryant's out. Steve mm -hmm. Nash now. Kevin Durant. Derrick Rose. That's a that's an all star lineup of mm -hmm. team of players that have missed at least a season in the mm -hmm. last two years. So yeah, well, you know, I mean, they they there's a lot uh, there's a lot of emphasis on on uh, playing hard for 48 minutes. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? And I mean, some of these guys. Um, should you I, know? I mean, things happen though. I mean, it's a contact sport. I mean, you're running up and consider re reducing the schedule at all like do you think 82 games in a season and then i mean they if they make it into the playoffs and you say you play another 21 to 28 games possibly i guess mm -hmm. is the or i guess 12 to 28 would be the most or 12 would be the least if you were to go through to the finals or 16. well i mean but. if you play 72 games or 82 games you know what you know you can't predict or gauge when you're going to fall wrong on an ankle or you're going to, you know. But do you think maybe um, after like a night of on a back-to-back -back, like you just played and then your your body is maybe a little weaker on that second night? So if you do land awkwardly, maybe it might Oh, yeah, well, well no, exactly. Oh, yeah, night, yeah, yeah. Might yeah. Well, the second night? Or like the, do you think they should consider reducing the schedule at all? Like these no, players I don't. don't get, I don't think they should at all. And I don't think they ever will. I mean, I don't know how you can. There's so many, there's so much money tied up into so many different areas that, you know, I mean, and even even the players are, you know, the salary cap's going to, like, go up huge and then it, yeah. after, the, after next season. Um, so they'll want more money to play less games. I mean, you already have guys like LeBron taking two weeks off just to get himself right. Okay. Kevin Love there a I couple weeks ago him. took a took a night, you know, took a night off. A lot of these guys take nights off and um, you know, I mean, is it really that much to ask that they go out and play three three basketball games in a run of a week? Um, well, I think on top of it, on not, top of the traveling and then on top of the practice. <laughs> they travel A1 class 1. So Yeah, but it's still uh, physically exhausting like they're if, professional athletes mm, they get paid millions of dollars to entertain but i still think it would get a wear and tear on your body if you're going at 10 10 hey. 11 months strong and then up and down i think you i think that's the reason we're seeing more injuries now uh, than what we used to though is be, players are bigger stronger injuries are a part of the game i just played four basketball games in the last two days I'm still here to yeah. li live through it or whatever, you know what I mean? If you want to pay me a couple million dollars to go out and play three ball games that, of a sport that I love, I'm not going to complain, yeah. and I don't think they should either. And on the other side of it, I mean, there's just so many, much money in TV, ownership, the people that they employ, yeah. as we were talking about before, leaders. as we were talking about before, before the show started. I mean, there's just so much money that less games would impact. It'll never, I don't see it ever happening. Then maybe would you be in favor of uh, maybe increasing a roster, like having more roster have, players, like so well, that you can maybe lessen the burden on some of these players, so they don't necessarily have to play as much or play. Well, I mean that's that's again up to the coaches. You know what I mean? Like I mean that's that's their that's their time. To, I mean even maybe cutting back on practice time. Yeah. You know what I mean? I mean they're in the gym. You know, two or three hours before a game, you know, maybe that needs to be scaled back. But, you know what, I'm not an NBA coach. Yeah. I don't know how it exactly all operates. I just feel that um, complaining that you're playing too many games is, is utterly ridiculous <laughs> to, to me. I mean, I don't know why you would complain. I mean, I, I, don't, I really no. don't know why. Oh, I don't think too many players have necessarily complained. I think it's just more doctors and stuff like... Um, media even like just 
well, that's well, the, reason. the media is going to complain about whatever they want to complain, yeah. you know, whatever story they want to try and sell. But I mean, yeah, but, I, mean, I mean, the back to back, like three games on uh, four on the road in four nights. Yes. Now that could be changed, but you know, taking a week off after the All Star break, you don't need to do that either. No. You know what I mean? Well, so, and even preseason games, I don't necessarily well, see. Yeah, the don't point play preseason pre games well, anymore. And that's the thing of what they say about the NFL. I mean, why are you playing four preseason games? Just play two. Yeah. You know, play two. Practice, to, you know, like, I mean, yeah. and I mean, sooner than later, they'll they'll you know, other than sixteen games, they'll they'll up it to eighteen because there's just too much money to be made yeah. for you know the NFL. So I mean, yeah, scale back on that, um, and um, you know, I mean, but I mean, that's a conversation through all of the leagues. You know, yeah. I mean, they're saying that about baseball going back to one fifty four, and it's you know, it's the same, it's the same thing. I mean, why? I mean, why do you need to change it? The only reason I would necessarily change the schedule um, in NBA or NHL or even MLB, football is a little better, but I'd try, I'd try and make it a little more balanced where each team plays each team so many games, a home and away, just to kind of make it more balanced rather than having the divisions where you can have a stronger division one year and a weaker division one year. I know the divisions change every year, but during that year, the team in the weaker division does get the advantage compared to the team in the stronger division. So maybe I would just try and balance out the games a little more between every team so then there's really no argument on who's the better team. Yeah, well, I mean, but, well, yeah, but the better team always rises to the top. I mean... Well, not whether, necessarily, though, I don't well, think. Okay, well, who would you say? Well, no. Well, like, who, who's, but, a, who's a, but I, who's but a, I mean, who's a like, pretender that? I mean, we, we all I mean, know that... You, that, that you the, could even go, like, uh, say, like, eight, ten years ago, like, in the Calgary... Calgary, if, say, Calgary would have won that Stanley Cup that year, would, would have they been the best team in the NHL that year? No friggin' way. Same as the Edmonton Oilers, they would have won it. You get your Cinderella teams that can win it in the playoffs where they're not necessarily the best team in the league, and that's where I think it could... Maybe it could be just shifted as you play each team the same amount of times. Just kind of like well, I mean, the Raptors probably net this year have it a little easier than say the New Orleans Pelicans. But if say every team played every team four times or something, what twice home, twice away, I know it might be a little harder with traveling or something. But well, for years, just saying the NBA for yeah. just for an argument for this one, the Eastern Conference dominated the Western Conference. Yeah. Well, things have shifted, and I'm sure things are going to shift back. It, it all, you know, it it has does have something to do with player movement. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, so if a lot of players choose to shift to go to these New York, the Bostons, you know, these East Coast teams, then the Eastern Conference is going to get better, you know? I mean, you're going to have Durant, Westbrook. I mean, are what? they going to shift? Are they going to move, you know? The way these winners are going, I can't see anyone wanting to come over to the East Coast. <laughs> you look at, like, baseball, the AL East was notoriously the best division for years. They're not the best division anymore. Things change, and yeah. you know, I mean, yes, I mean, as far as balanced schedules go, I don't know, man. You play the team that's in front of you, yep. and I mean, any on any given night, any team can win. One bounce of the puck, one. Well, definitely. You know, but by the time mean, you make it to the professional league, there's not going to be one NHL team that much better than any NHL team. I mean, if you were to even go Buffalo against. Uh, Anaheim or something right now, which is the one or New York Rangers or Montreal, like one versus last. Buffalo's still probably going to end up winning twenty or thirty out of those hundred games if you were to play them in a hundred games. So I mean, there's still I don't know. I, I can't see Montreal. Like you said, though, like it's I. There is a contrast in the top and the bottom, but by the time you make it to the professionals, like the majors or whatever, there's not that much of a contrast where any team can win on any given night. It's oh, just yeah, a, yeah. But, I mean, if you were to extrapolate it to 100 games, I mean, Montreal is going to win probably 75 of those 100 yeah, games. Yeah, but, I mean, Buffalo would still equal. win 25. Like oh, they, yeah, they yeah. Could oh, still, yeah exactly. exactly. That's what I mean. It could mm -hmm. still, on any given night, there's still... It's not going to be cut and dry or 100% perfect for any of the teams now. Mm -hmm. Although uh, Golden State has a chance to come in second or tie a 30-year-old record or whatever. They'll be in second behind the Boston Celtics, I think, who 85, 86 was it, went 40-1 and one at home. Mm -hmm. Golden State's uh, on pace to go 39-2 and two this year. If mm -hmm. so. Yeah, but that'll be a tough team to beat in seven-game series, that's for sure. Cleveland Cavaliers have now won 16 in a row at home. They're looking good. I don't see Kevin Love sticking there myself, but well, not him and his little um, him and know, LBJ don't seem to 
get along too great, so. Well, no, I mean, you quite correctly termed him the drama king there yeah. <laughs> uh, a, couple, a couple weeks ago, so. I mean, he, he just, he can't, he just can't give it up, and I mean, I'm sure he was, he was hurt that uh, Kevin Love dared, um, you know. Russell Westbrook, the MVP. Gave the MVP. <laughs> and I mean. In all yeah, fairness, Paul, he, I mean, he's, yeah, I, mean, I don't think he's too far off. No, he answered the question correctly. I mean, you should probably stick up for your teammates and say, yeah. you know, but, you know, oh well. <laughs> the, <laughs> I don't oh, feel that yeah. terrible about it. You no, know I mean, what I mean? What does uh, Durant outdo for uh, OKC's chance? Do you mean, do you see them at least making it past first round, second round? Oh, no, 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 no. I mean, they. You can't see Westbrook and Ibaka. I, well, Ibaka Ibaka's should be out. back. Well, yeah, playoffs, but I mean, maybe, but. No, I don't know. I. I mean, they have, what, eight games left, so that's probably, what, three weeks? It'd be close. That's tough. That's tough. Yeah. I mean, and, you know, what what kind of state is Ibaka going to be in when he comes back? I mean, I know he's a trooper, and, I mean, I, I respect Ibaka to the nth degree, and he plays hard, and he's he's tough, but and he will come back. Yeah. But There won't be Golden State. But I, but I think the, if maybe I mean. if they I get mean, uh, Houston or something, maybe in the first round, because right. Houston's going to be missing Patrick Beverly as well. That's right. Um, I don't think they can make the movement up. I mean, I mean they're they're the eighth seed right now. I mean they might be able to catch Dallas, um, but I mean they got you know they got some work yeah. to do. You know what I mean? So and time, you know they're running out of time. I mean they've done well to get to leapfrog the teams that they did, the yeah. Pel Pelicans and, and the Suns. Um, so. It's too bad, really, because uh, yeah. well, I mean, they were a good team. They, it would have been nice to see Durant and Westbrook and Ibaka at least healthy 75% of the season uh, well, or something. Well, we've been, you know, as fans have been saying that for the last few years. I mean, other than that one year that they lost to the Heat in the finals, I mean, not, not a one, the they, team hasn't been together for the playoff no. run. And, I mean, it's it's... It's too bad because as fans, you'd like, I mean, you want to, see to me, I mean, they're all three guys that you can root for. Yeah. I mean, I know how Westbrook could rub some the wrong way, oh, man, what but, a player. but I, I, I love watching him play. and I, I, I just love the passion he plays with. He doesn't quit on any play. He's just, I don't know. He, well, he's, he's no, no he's, he's, uh, he's no, uh, you know, no nonsense out there. I mean, it's, 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 it's refreshing to see, yeah. um, you know, and today too, I find too much in today's sports. I mean, they're all. You know, glad handing and you know, you know, you know, kissing face after games and stuff. And it's like you just battle these guys. I mean, it's good to be. I mean, it's not like you have to hate people, but no, I mean, we, you know, I mean, how can you, you know, I don't know. I, 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 I like his intensity. Yeah. I find it refreshing. It, it's kind of a little bit of a throwback to the old days where teams these didn't like each other. Yeah, and I mean, <laughs> I kind of feel that way as a competitor too. It's it's it's. You know, us and them. You yep. know what I mean? If you're with us or you're with me, then I got your back. If you're with them, I want you, you know yeah. what I mean? I want to <laughs> rip your lungs out, Jim, right? So, <laughs> uh, so who, do you have Golden State, Cleveland, Golden State, Atlanta? Do you have Golden yeah, State I, coming I mean, out of the West? I yeah. mean, I do have Golden State coming out of the West. I mean, I think they're just too much, they'll be just too hard to beat. But they haven't done anything in the playoffs before, you know what I mean? I mean, so. You know, some you know the, a popular belief, and and I do agree with that. I mean, you gotta you gotta lose before you win. You know yeah. what I mean? And uh, you know, maybe they make it to the conference finals and, and peter out. I still like them coming out of it. I mean, I I like Cleveland coming out of the the East as well. But but oh, me too, unfortunately. But Atlanta exposed them there, and uh, you know, you're only one injury away from really a upsetting the apple cart. So. You know, we'll see. I mean, Clay Thompson was out for a little while. He's back. Um, Curry's, you know, had injury issues in the in in the past. Bogut, without him, they're a completely different team. Yeah. I mean, he's you know he won't win Defensive Player of the Year, but I mean he's definitely he's, in he's the conversation. Defensive core, you know, yeah. I mean, oh, for sure. So I mean, you know, I mean things happen. It's, it's, it's going to be a good playoff. Oh, absolutely. Right? I mean, I I know everyone. You know, when you ask people on the street, you know, oh, I love NHL playoffs and blah blah blah. Well. Yeah, they're good, but I, you know, I find NBA playoffs. I mean, once you get down to the final, you know what I mean, like yep. the, the the conference semifinals going up to the finals. I mean, it's it's good ball and it's good. It's good, you know what yeah. I mean. Yeah. Uh, I it's phenomenal. Like, the playoffs is it's right now this year. This time of the year is the best time of the year. I mean, we we just finish it in March Madness. We're starting out with uh, hockey playoffs, basketball playoffs coming right up. Spring training for baseball. Baseball 
preseason season is going to mm -hmm. be coming right up. Mm -hmm. Like, and then shortly thereafter that, it's going to be NFL preseason or CFL preseason and season. Um, I'm a huge soccer fan. The MLS season starting up. Mm -hmm. uh, DPL is kind of coming down to a wrap. So is the Champions Cup. So I mean, it's just best time of the year for sports. And then the sun's coming out. We can actually get out and kick a ball and shoot a ball and. Yep. Best time, best time of the year. Yep. Oh yeah. No, it's good times. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, I I see Golden State myself. Uh, unfortunately, I see Cleveland too. I do. Oh yeah, but I mean, it would be nice to see Atlanta in there because I mean, obviously they. I'd like to see my Raptors in there. Well, they're, <laughs> the they're, way they've been playing. Yeah, no, no, it's uh, they no, they no. haven't been playing too well. Um, I think they. They give up too many points, and they didn't find that but, uh, that other score. We're going to beat Washington. We should beat Washington probably in the well, first Was round. Yeah, so Washington's in a then, I mean, if we, they're on the road against Atlanta yeah. or Cleveland. Yeah, it, I don't like their chances. I we went three and zero against or three and one against Atlanta so far this year. So I mean, if they hit Atlanta in the second round, they they could do something. But uh, I, I I agree. I don't really like the yeah. chances. But who knows. If they regain the form they had at the start of the year and at the end of last year, then maybe they could upset yep. somebody. And so. especially if Lowry's hurt and, you know, his back acts up on him again, then, you know. They're, they're done. Yeah. But, I mean, if he comes back and he's back's healthy or whatever, then yep. they, they, they have potential. But the way they've been playing, it's hard to see that potential. So. Yeah. Well, hey, you know what? That's why we watch the games because yeah. you never know what's going to happen. No, exactly. So. And uh, so, guys, make sure you watch uh, the NCAA March Madness, the Final Four and the Finals. That's going to be an awesome weekend this weekend. And uh, stay tuned and come back not next week. Have a good Easter. But the following week, we will catch up and have a playoff preview for you. Yep.